In 2001, fresh off of his divorce from Elizabeth Daly, who you might know as the voice of Tommy Pickles, Buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls, and Rudy Tabuti, an internet gambling entrepreneur named Rick Salomon found himself a new main squeeze, a young, wealthy socialite named Paris Hilton of the famous Hilton Hotel family. As Paris and Rick traveled the world together, Rick had taken to filming absolutely everything they did. You're like obsessed, you always film me. But it was one of Rick's little vlogs that would become more famous than all the others. A video that would help elevate Paris Hilton for being some rich girl who is known mostly just to a tabloid gossip obsessed niche to becoming a household name. One of the most famous women in the world. And the truth about this video is actually a lot different from what you've been led to believe all these years. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of One Night in Paris. This video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise. Their wireless earbuds come in a fun variety of colors and patterns with a variety of fit options. It was co-founded by Ray J and it is loved by none other than Melissa Etheridge. And to see if you love it as much, Raycon has a 45 day free return policy. Raycon earbuds give you 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design for a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. If you're trying to take a break from looking at screens all day long, Raycon can help you get away from them. I like to put mine in and listen to some podcasts while I go do other things. Just click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash wang to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. I remember it so clearly, it was November of 2001. I was sitting on a metal folding chair in an acting class. We're waiting for the teacher to show up and all of a sudden one of the other students goes up to me and he's like, Hey, did you see the Paris Hilton sex tape? To which I respond, Who? At this point in time, I had absolutely no idea who Paris Hilton was. And I was far from being alone in that regard. I mean, unless you were very, very into celebrity gossip at that time, you didn't know her yet. And you might be surprised to find out that no, I was not very, very into celebrity gossip. But still, later that day I go home, I open up LimeWire and immediately get that video. Sure, I didn't know who Paris Hilton was, but I knew that she was out there naked on the internet. So I had to go and, you know, store up in the Pokédex. Gotta catch them all. And this was a strange video, not really what I was expecting. All in night vision with Paris Hilton looking like a cryptid of some sort. I was expecting something more like that infamous Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee video, which apparently is getting a Hulu series made about it now. But what I got instead was Paranormal Activity. And in a way, this kind of was like seeing some kind of mythical beast of legend. You see, earlier that year, rumors that such a tape existed had already been circulating. In fact, these rumors had grown to the extent that people were saying that there were as many as 10 Paris Hilton sex tapes that existed. Including another one where she hooks up with playmate Nicole Marie Lenz and is recorded by MTV's Simon Rex. Throughout the year, several of these tapes were allegedly brought to porn distributors in an attempt to sell them. And others were rumored to simply being circulating around the Hollywood circles. Because supposedly that was just what these people did. They would trade each other's sex tapes so everyone could get jealous of their hot bodies. And at the time, these were rumors that Paris Hilton outright denied. In an article published on August 8th of 2003, remember that date, amidst all the rumors Paris had spoken to New York Magazine. Specifically, she spoke of the notorious sex tape with her ex-boyfriend Rick Salomon. According to the article, he had been going around Hollywood telling people that this tape existed. Hilton insists there's no video, at least that she knows of. He's a complete liar and scumbag. She said last week in Ibiza, where she was vacationing with, of all people, Girls Gone Wild producer Joe Francis. He is a very sick man. People love to talk shit because they're jealous. I don't care. Whatever. Ironically, it turned out that Girls Gone Wild was one of the companies approached to distribute this tape. An anonymous donor had tried to get them to purchase it for $1 million. But Girls Gone Wild turned it down as they could not verify who actually owned the rights to it. But not all businesses are as scrupulous as Girls Gone Wild. Show us where babies feed. Enter a pornographer named Kevin Blatt. 
A man who had referred to himself as the P.T. Barnum of Pussy. He began to make a name for himself after a stunt where he met the porn star Houston and set up a live stream of her labioplasty operation. For those not in the know, a labioplasty is a surgical procedure in which the labia are made smaller for aesthetic purposes. I like how I did this motion like I was like slicing a potato. The event itself was a failure. Although Houston did manage to sell her removed labia bits online for $4,500. In any case though, Blatt's stunt had succeeded in getting him attention. And after an appearance on the Howard Stern Show, Blatt was approached by two men. A phone sex baron named Ian Eisenberg, and a man named Roger Vidox who owned a porn company named Marvad. These men showed Blatt the infamous night vision clip. A clip that now had its home on Vidox's website, sexbrat.com with the promise that they had the entire full-length tape and were just waiting to reveal it all to the world. The idea was that they could use Blatt's connection to Howard Stern to create a bidding war for the tape, and they wound up working out a deal. Blatt would call into the Howard Stern show, and every time he mentioned sexbrat.com, he would get $1,000. Every time Howard mentioned it, he would get $2,000. After this arrangement is made, Blatt gets on the phone with Bob Abui and sets up his appearance. In the time between this deal being made and the appearance actually happening, a lot changed. Shit had already hit the fan, the clip was all over file sharing services, and legal threats were flying all over the place. After contacting the website, Paris Hilton managed to get the clip taken off of sexbrat.com, but Kevin Blatt still got paid. First of all, what is sexbrat.com? Sexbrat.com. 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 My client, Sexbrat.com. And after this, here comes the cascade of lawsuits. It gets really convoluted, so bear with me here. Paris and her parents believe that Rick himself had recorded it, going on to say that he filmed the video without her consent. Paris had said that she was out of it and didn't know what she was doing. And they also alleged that Paris was underage at the time of filming, a claim that was patently false since Paris was 19 in 2001 when it was shot. So Rick responded by suing the Hiltons for defamation. He would also sue Roger Vidox's company Marvad for distributing the tape without his permission. And Marvad responded by trying to get him on an interesting technicality. They claim that because in part of the video Paris Hilton could be seen helping to set up the camera, she actually co-owned the copyright to this video. They claim that because she was also entitled to the copyright, Rick Salomon's lawsuit was invalid without her being a part of it. Ironically, the argument they made against him would be an argument that he would use to support his case against the Hiltons. Here she's hanging out, helping me set up the camera. She does participate, so there's no illegal filming going on. And all this was very legal and consensual, over 18 years old, barely. And, uh, you know, you can't hide cameras on people. That's illegal, but this is all. And here she was helping me for a second set up the camera and now she's about to get a suck down. Rick would then put the full video up on another website called TrustFunGirls.com in which Paris Hilton is referred to only as the Trust Fun Girl to avoid outright naming her. Kind of like what the Fire Pro games used to do with wrestlers. After this, Paris Hilton would sue a Florida-based internet company named Katahani Limited. I assume that Katahani had some connection to trust fund girls, but there is literally no information to be found about this company except that they were sued by Paris Hilton. But either way, this case would eventually be thrown out. And then Rick Salomon would drop his case against her. By this time, Rick was distributing the full video through a company named Red Light District Video, under the name One Night in Paris. An agreement was allegedly struck that would pay Paris Hilton $400,000 for this in addition to a percent of sales. However, Paris Hilton maintains to this day that she has never seen a single dime from this video. Oh yeah, and also, this version opens up with a tribute to 9-11. Really touching stuff. But we're still not done with the lawsuits. Marvad would also file a lawsuit of their own. This suit was against another player in this whole mess, a man named Don Thrasher a good friend of Rick Salomon. Allegedly, Marvad's Roger Vidox had been contacted by Thrasher regarding the tape. They claimed that they were led to believe that Thrasher had permission to sell this tape, so they bought it from him for $50,000. And after this happened, Thrasher insisted that not only did he have permission to sell this, but he gave Rick Salomon $25,000 from the sale. Salomon, however, claims that Thrasher stole the tape from his apartment and never gave him permission. And here's where it gets even more interesting. 
You see, there is a contract for this transaction. In this contract between Vidox and Thrasher, it states that Solomon and Hilton created the video with the intention of it eventually being released to friends and fans. But now that Hilton denied its existence, Solomon wants it out there to prove he's not a liar. And note that this contract was signed on August 26, 2003, two weeks after the New York Magazine article where Paris Hilton called Rick Solomon a liar. The contract also insists that Salomon must remain confidential in this agreement, as the knowledge that he approves of its release could jeopardize his then-marriage to 90210's Shannon Doherty. Shannon Doherty, Paris Hilton, Tommy Pickles, later on Pamela Anderson, twice? This guy gets around. Personally, I find it really strange that this contract spends so much time going into the underlying reasoning for releasing the tape. I would think that the contract would just be, here are your rights, here are your obligations, here are my rights and my obligations. Sign on the dotted line. But the whole thing is just weirdly detailed and personal. And looking at the strange contract, I see two possibilities. Maybe Thrasher really did steal this tape as Rick Salomon claimed, and then he just added all these details to make the lies seem more believable. Or maybe everything in the contract is true and Rick Salomon really did have Thrasher acting on his behalf. If that's the case, Don Thrasher is an absolute moron for not having another contract between himself and Rick Salomon. He would have been leaving himself with absolutely no way to prove that he was telling the truth and it would have made Rick Salomon completely free to throw Thrasher under the bus if things went wrong. And things did go wrong. Although the more I read about Don Thrasher, who apparently is now a politician in Kentucky. Right here, let's talk about the restraining orders if you want to talk. Let's talk about what she did to Dr. Harrison. With several accusations against him from his own party, the more I'm inclined to think that maybe he did steal the thing. Now let's circle back to the fact that the contract says that Rick Salmon and Paris Hilton made this tape with the intention of it eventually being seen by friends and fans. I think this idea is something that a lot of people already thought without ever having seen the contract. Because there's no denying that this video was a major catalyst in Paris Hilton becoming the force she would eventually become. A person who managed to basically turn every scandal into a win and make the blueprint for a person who's famous for being famous. Although there was that one rumor that Paris Hilton was secretly a math genius who was in Mensa. Partially spurred on by a strange New York Times article that was later corrected, saying that it misquoted a New Yorker article. But it's a rumor that still persists to this day. The sex tape thing was just taking her appeal to the next level. And the timing was all so convenient. It would be on December 2nd mere weeks after the leak that her new TV show, The Simple Life, would premiere on Fox. A show where rich party girls Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie go to live on a farm to experience The Simple Life, right at a time when reality shows were just starting to completely dominate primetime. In the weeks leading up to the release of the show, Fox had booked a massive promotional tour for it. Regis and Kelly, TRL, Craig Kilborn, Sharon Osbourne, David Letterman, well, after the leak of the tape, Paris Hilton's family hired a new publicist, Dan Clores, who had previously worked with Michael Jackson, Mike Tyson, and Donald Trump. Dan Clores was the founder of the DKC public relations firm, who described themselves as maximizing return on news, something that Paris Hilton certainly did succeed in doing. Dan's first order of business? Cancel every single one of these appearances. Classic strategy to bury a scandal, one that we see still on YouTube to this day. Most of the outlets were quiet about it, but David Letterman in particular was not happy. He took to his show to vent about this on several occasions. So the, the lovely Paris Hilton was uh, supposed to be on the show tomorrow, and uh, sh she uh, canceled. And the reason she canceled, she hired a uh, publicist, this uh, no-good, beady-eyed, weasel, thug putz. <laughs> A publicist got a hold of her and forced her to cancel her appearance on the show. I hate that. Now, yeah, th now this is a huge, huge career mistake for the beautiful Paris Hilton. Quite a few people questioned the wisdom of Dan Clores' advice, saying that if Paris were to do these interviews now when everybody's talking about her, surely it would just increase the publicity from it even more. But when questioned by the media about this, Cloris said that his top priority was to protect Paris. 
In any case, it was still expected that even without the interviews, the show would still enjoy a bump from this. And sure enough, it was a massive success. Not only did it bring huge ratings in for itself, but it also brought a notable ratings increase for The O.C. which aired after it, and That 70s Show which aired before it. This was a huge win for Fox, which was struggling to compete at the time. But because of the role the video played in this success, a lot of people questioned whether or not Fox or Paris Hilton leaked it on purpose. Both Fox and Paris denied this, and Paris continues to deny it to this day. But a lot of people think they're lying. Especially because after this, people started to see the celebrity sex tape as, in Paris Hilton's own words, a blueprint to become famous. But what do I think? With all the evidence that's available, looking through old articles, videos, interviews, opinions, and posts for hours, my gut feeling is that Paris Hilton is telling the truth. I think it's possible that, as it said in that contract, that maybe back then in 2001 when they made this tape, they had remarked about sharing it with people. But keep in mind that that video was made two whole years before the shitstorm. A lot can change in two years, especially for a 19-year-old. And in any case, a single scandal can only take you so far. We've seen so many people throughout the years find themselves suddenly in the middle of the big media shitstorm, and then boom, everybody moves on and we never hear from them again. How many reality TV stars throughout the years quickly faded into nothing? Paris, on the other hand, went in the other direction, becoming one of the most famous people on the planet, venturing out not just into other mediums, but several of her own business ventures. And although she's not as popular as she was at her peak, she is in the middle of mounting a comeback. Recently, in September of 2020, she was the subject of a YouTube Originals documentary entitled This Is Paris. A lot of the documentary goes into how Paris Hilton had been playing a character for all these years, and now she was kind of stuck with it. Not that the Mensa math genius thing was true, but she definitely played up the ditzy party girl shtick. And in fact, in past interviews, she has even said that this character she made was directly inspired by Cher from Clueless. And it makes sense. People like to watch this person that they believe is stupid because then it makes them feel good that they think they're better than somebody. The truth is, and I know this is such a cliche thing to say, but reality TV was never as real as it was made out to be. But as someone who grew up as a wrestling fan, I was kind of okay with that. And in the early 2000s, a time when pro wrestling had decided that it wants to keep winking at us and expose the business, the then emerging format of reality TV was insistent on keeping kayfabe. And when you look at it that way, Paris Hilton is kind of like the undertaker of that world. Yeah, I did just say that. But anyway, that's all for now. If you liked this video, check out my other video about the website that created the concept of revenge porn. Is anyone up.com? I'm out.